The new Rolling Stone with President Obama on the cover will be out tomorrow. Editor and publisher Jan Winner rarely gives interviews, but we're delighted to say he's here with us in Studio 57. Hello, Jan Winner. Good morning, Gail. Good to see Charlie, you. Erica. I, I, I love the piece because I love how you set it up. Because here's President Obama giving you an hour, which is very, very rare. And even starting the interview, you start negotiating for extra time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, st he started off by saying, well, call, call, call the Secretary of State's office and tell him I'm going to be 10 minutes late. Now, I knew I wanted tw ex extra, so I said 20, and then he said, well, 15, and we compromised. And when I left, uh -huh. finished the interview, Hillary was sitting outside She's in that little there. tiny chair in the Secretary's <laughs> yeah. small office, squeezed in, kind of happily cooling her heels, waiting for me to be done. Waiting was, for Jan yeah. Winter to be done. Well, clearly there's something, because, listen, in four years, Rolling Stone has done the interview. You've had it for the last three years with right. the president. So I'm thinking there must be some type of rapport between the two. But, but you said that he seemed a little somber this time. Well, I mean, I, he's, I think, it's not fair to say enjoying the job, but it's just really stressful. Mm. And at a point, it just gets wearisome and tired, you know. And so, you know, and he's been pounded back and forth mm -hmm. like that. But it's not that he... You know, he's more somber, the stakes are higher. I, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to describe it, but mm -hmm. it's tough. Hillary looked tired. I mean, even in three years, it's just a, a job that you can't imagine. You also yeah, point out their relationship, though, too, that you really think their relationship, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, is in a very good place. Oh, I you think it's great. I mean, he made it, it was such a smart move to, to have yes. her do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. she represents the United States in a way nobody else could because she almost speaks as the president. And so she's got the double duty of both the diplomacy part and also the symbolic part of it. And she's worked her, I mean, she's always traveled as much as she has. Right. I mean, and, she's, and it was a brilliant pick, mm -hmm. you know. What does he think of Mitt Romney? Well, yeah. I, he, he, he didn't want to really say what he thought of him personally. He kind of really ducked the question. But he gave, I think, what he, his, the answer and the thought that he's worked out in the way he wants to campaign against, which is to say, this guy is not going to be able to escape the conservative stand, the stands he took during the primary. And though it may look like panning, he, has to, he must mean what he says. And we're going to take him at his word. So I think uh, he, he indicates the plan will be to make a really sharp contrast. Do you think they're running issue. scared or not? The Obama people? I mm -hmm. think they're all, everybody is running scared. You have to. If you're not running scared, you're crazy. If you go with overconfidence. You're going to make mistakes. You go in there like every last vote counts, and I mm -hmm. think that's the way, the way they mean to take it. Has On the other hand, I think they're of, confident. They'll get. I think they think they're going to get it. Has your impression of him, having watched him in office, changed over the last three years? Of him personally, not at all. I, he's still one of the smartest, self-confident people who's really sure-footed, knows what he says. He's intelligent. I mean, honestly, I think he's he's got to be as good as it gets yes. in history, in this yeah. job. I mean, he's really suited. I think he made a, one fundamental mistake at the beginning, which he misjudged the nature of the Republican opposition. I think he went there a little overconfident of his own skills as a right. negotiator and as an organizer and a guy who's able to reconcile. But the stakes, they were unreconcilable and it was quite obvious. Mm -hmm. You mean good as it gets in the Oval Office? I mean, Bill O'Reilly was just here saying Lincoln, who's a hero of the president, mm -hmm. was the greatest president we've ever had. Yeah, are you comparing him in your judgment? Well, it's a little early to judge against, you know, all of the presidents. But he, as an individual, appears to be as capable, as confident, and competent, and intelligent, and thoughtful, and committed, mm -hmm. and with a vision as about anybody we've seen, certainly in recent years. I mean, here, here's a man who could be a great president. You know what's interesting about him is he does clearly have a feeling for popular culture, mm -hmm. music especially. Yeah. yeah. And he's not afraid to show that side either. Yeah. Not, you talked to him about his singing he's, that he's done on the road. Yeah, he's very comfortable. He had his one-liner worked out about the singing. He said, well, my idea is, you know, <laughs> do it as little as possible, therefore the ticket prices don't go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's, an, he's a gift. He's natural at that. And yes, he's at, an sure. easy, at-ease man with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think popular culture is more important than it ever has been. You know, did you see him on Jimmy years. Fallon the other night when he I did, did. the slow he's, news jam? I just thought the fact that he would even do that publicly shows. Yeah. Okay. He's confident at, at all of it. You know, uh -huh. he's very yeah. sure, self assured and, and uh, natural. And he's took very, a mic handoff from Mick Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what I wanted to get as was most people, when they are asked to sing in public, kind of get nervous about it or don't want to do it. You know, they're afraid of the voice. And what he said to me was that he knew he could sing. There wasn't going to be a problem here. <laughs> It would be just fine. He just needed the mic. Yeah. Um, you talk about him being very self-assured. You talked to him about the military in this article. Mm -hmm. One thing that really stuck out to me is he says, I very much believe in civilian control of our military and that military decisions are in service of strategies and the broader conceptions of diplomacy that are made here in the White House. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting stance to take. Mm -hmm. How does it seem that will play? Well, I think in a 
very careful and reason in non-inflammatory way, he's saying when I got in here, the Pentagon was used to having its way and dictating policy and just the, the, their relationship with the previous president, Bush, was such that they dictated policy. Bush didn't dictate policy. Mm -hmm. So he indicated he took the time and the effort, you know, to, uh, to reassert himself. And do you get the sense that there really is that, that, that mutual respect and understanding he between fired, the two? He, he fired, due to our <laughs> coverage, mm, yes. a, a commanding general, a theater general of the war in Afghanistan. He, got, he fired that guy yeah. after putting him in nine months later. Now, yeah. the last time that happened was with Truman. So was Truman and MacArthur. So he's confident of his decisions, and he went in there and he wrestled with the troop level decisions, and like him or not, mm -hmm. those are his decisions. Let me just quote one thing you said. Uh, there's no one that I know who would doubt that the Bush administration policy was run by Cheney, mm -hmm. Bush, and Rumsfeld, not by the generals. Uh, no, I know, mean, but I'm that was not really a military acting uh, and making the civilians uh, cow to their demands. Well, I, I, I grant your point. I, I think I over, uh, overspoke that. I mean, it was Bush and Cheney's war. They, I don't know that the Pentagon wanted it. But once in there, they let the Pentagon run the thing and dictate the troop levels and dictate the strategy. I, I'm saying that Cheney, having had his experience as Secretary of Defense, was a seasoned vet mm -hmm. there and knew how to work with the generals or whatever. Mm -hmm. Obama walks in. He's just a guy who has been a community organizer and a two-year senator. And all of a sudden, now he's in charge. And he had to show his stuff and show that he's reasonable and thoughtful, but also he's going to be commanding yeah. and make the final decisions. And I think he, one of the interesting he did that, that, and he was proud yeah. of that. Uh, uh, one of the interesting things he has Plus, done. Plus, I'm not done. He has. He had. He walks in. He walks in with two two wars going on under yes. him. Yes, as a young leader. run by the generals. Now he's got to say, you know, yeah. these things haven't been working out. We're going to shift strategy, and, and there's not going to be a basis in my West Point education. And has made uh, very very difficult decisions, and has been right in the decisions he has made. Right. Having to do with Bin Laden and, yeah. and the use of drone missiles and other yeah. things. It's going to be an interesting race. But I love this is a final thing about the interview that you go to the. White House bearing gifts. What does one bring the President of the United States <laughs> well, as a gift yon winner? The, the In last 30 seconds, just tell us. Socks. Uh -huh. The last time I was there, he note, before he started the interview, he noted the kind of colorful striped socks I had on. I said, yeah. I wish I could wear these kind of things. You know, I said, you know, whatever. So at, when I got back, I sent him a couple pairs of socks. He sent me a really nice thank you. You know, it became kind of a gag. Nice. So when I showed up this time, there are your socks I brought him two <laughs> pairs of socks. Uh -huh. These are two pairs. I mean, before he opens, he says, "I know what it is," and so he pulls them out and he looks at them. He's appraising him and likes them. These are pretty sharp. You know, these are really cool. He shows them to his press. Secretary. He says, "What do you, what do you think, James? Those are great." So he looks nice. at them again. He looks at me. and says, "But I think these are second-term socks." <laughs> Young winner, I wear a size 10 and I love shoes. I'll Do with be... it what you will. Okay. Thank you for coming. Pleasure. You for coming. Nice to have you. Thanks.